Well, good afternoon, colleagues. It's really nice to be here with all, all of you once again. Um, my name is Guillermo, and I wanted to start my presentation by just reflecting on something. Um, my background is in marine biology. I'm a marine biologist by training, but today I'm presenting in the, in the ocean governance section. Um, and I, I think that just speaks to how transformative the Nero's journey has been um, to, uh, to many of us, right? Um, and like myself, I think a lot of you also spend a lot of time thinking about how we go from science and data to decision making across uh, scales of governance. So that's what I'm going to talk about today and some of the work I've been producing, uh, especially in the areas of um, high seas fisheries and biodiversity. So the main areas of, of focus for my research have been uh, spatial ecology, uh, international fisheries management, and um, biodiversity governance beyond national jurisdiction. And over the last few years, those three areas have started to merge. And I've started to learn how to condense some of that knowledge bring it outside of academia and present it um, in an international audience. So for this presentation, I wanted to cover the four main areas of my research throughout the last four years as a nearest fellow, and to lay the groundworks on my research on understanding the impacts of fishing in the open ocean and try to mitigating some of these impacts. I started with a comprehensive literature review to try to aggregate all the known evidence of fisheries impacts across ecological levels in the open ocean. And through this literature review, we did find that f commercial fisheries are not only affecting target stocks and target populations, but they're having impacts that propagate across the entire biological community. We have evidence that uh, commercial fisheries have led to um, trophic cascades in the open ocean. And at the ecosystem level, we have seen that after decades of commercial fishing, we, ha we are experiencing losses in, in pelagic biodiversity in all ocean basins. So even though these ecosystems are, are extremely large, um, commercial fisheries after 70 years of exploitation have had a, a profound impact across ecological levels. And I guess um, the next couple of years of research for me have been trying to develop the tools, the science we need to mitigate some of these negative impacts. And I think a key component to answer this question, spatially, especially the spatial aspect of this question, is understanding the ecology of humans in the ocean. So to, a to answer this question, um, earlier in my PhD, I partnered with a group called Global Fishing Watch that tracks fishing vessels from space used in different technologies and use that information just as if we were studying um, tunas and sharks in the ocean and develop predictive models of preference for these fleets just like we would for, for top predator. So using these models, we can now start to predict the distribution of commercial fisheries in the open ocean as oceanographic conditions change. So we're now starting to model humans as a, as a new top predator in the open ocean. And the objective of this type of research is to then use these layers of information together with additional layers on where you expect target and non-target species to be in space and time to start overlapping the three and, make and identifying um, areas of the open ocean that we can start opening and closing dynamically to, to oceanic fisheries. And in that way, we can ensure that these industries can continue their fishing practices, can continue targeting the species that they depend on, but minimizing some of those unintended consequences um, on non-target biodiversity. The last part of my research as a nearest fellow has zoomed into um, the, the individual vessel behavior. And I'm, I'm really interested in understanding the behavior of individual fishers in the open ocean. You know, these fishing operations are extremely expensive. They're very costly at, at many levels. And at the end of the day, they're looking for needles in a haystack. So I'm interested in understanding what decision making, uh, what that decision making looks like. If like another top predator, they're tracking uh, fine scale oceanographic conditions or if in fact they have memory, if these vessels, like most animals, have memory and return to feeding grounds where they had previously been successful. So that's going to be the last portion of my research as a, as a PhD. I think the most interesting and transformative part of, of my experience as a nearest fellow has been leaving the realm of academia. And, and again, using those bundles of knowledge that we generate in the lab and through our, our models and delivering them to policymakers and decision makers that at the end of the day are the ones who can have a transformative impact. And to show you sort of how prolific we are in this network, this has been my journey at the ongoing um, negotiations of the UN for a new treaty on biodiversity, conservation and, and sustainable management. And I was fortunate to start my PhD just when <coughs> the PrepCom uh, conversations were starting. Um, when issues were trying to agree what this new agreement would look like. And over the course of the last four and a half years, I have either participated in or led a total of eight papers and, and um, policy briefs that have been presented at the UN. And I can't think of many other academic groups or early career researchers who've had this opportunity. 
to inform your delegates about the impacts of fisheries, uh, transboundary connectivity, uh, or how we can track uh, fishing vessels uh, from space. So my conclusions after um, these four years or so of research are that, in fact, we are having an impact uh, in the open ocean. Commercial fisheries are having a profound impact across ecological levels. But we, we have the models and the necessary technology to, to start developing the tools to dynamically <coughs> manage these systems. Maybe when the Law of the Sea was passed or, uh, in the 80s or the, the Fish Stocks Agreement in the 90s, we weren't quite there. But now we are. Um, and a key element in this sort of process is going to have to be to engage with the relevant multilateral organizations, such as RFMOs that we've heard from our colleagues, but also industry. Uh, as scientists, we cannot stick, stay in our academic silos and expect things uh, to change. So we have to engage with these stakeholder groups. And my last wish, I guess, um, in this journey is to, to make sure that the scientific community still has a seat at the table um, in the ongoing high seas negotiations. Uh, this treaty has come to stay. It's going to shape how we interact with biodiversity for decades to come. Um, and I truly hope that, that uh, through the nearest program or through, or through Nippon Foundation, we can continue bringing the best available science um, to this conversation. Thank you.